rate 2 rate 2 uses the method of bit level striping with hamming error correcting code please refer to the video on hamming code to follow this in a better way here the data to be written onto the disk will be considered as a set of data words each data word with a particular number of bits and for each data word will generate an error correcting code this error correcting code consists of multiple parity bits and the number of parity bits in it depends upon the number of data bits in the data word for example for four data bits we need three redundant bits another scheme is to use four redundant bits for 10 data bits this error correcting code will help to identify and correct if any bit is corrupted and also helps to recover any missing bit. And in RAID, since we have multiple disks, we keep a separate disk for each bit in the data word and we keep a separate redundant disk for each bit in the error correcting code. Then we use bit level striping. We stripe the data bits of the data word across the data disk. And then we stripe the parity bits of the error correcting code across the redundant disk. So while writing each word of the data onto the disk, the corresponding ECC will be calculated on the fly and the bits are striped to all the disks at the same time. Also while reading, the data word together with its ECC are read simultaneously and the ECC is analyzed to check whether the data is consistent. Hence for this, there should be a proper synchronization between the disks. The disks should spin in a synchronized manner. Thus, RAID 2 was hard to implement. And about performance, even though we use striping for parallelism, this long hamming code generation is a drawback. Also, since striping is at bit level, for every read or write access, almost all the disks will be involved. Hence, handling multiple requests is not possible. And about the usable disk capacity, compared to RAID 1, it is better. In RAID 1, for every data disk, we need a redundant disk. Here, for 4 data disks, we need only 3 redundant disks. For 10 data disks, we need only 4 redundant disks. Thus, the usable disk capacity is more compared to RAID 1. And of course, it provides redundancy, thereby reliability. It ensures that the data is safe even if any one of the disk fails. We will be able to rebuild the data using the remaining information. But the fact is that this much redundant information is not actually required. Why? Remember how Hamming code works. After reading a data word along with its corresponding error correcting code, at the receiving side the parities will be recalculated. If there is any bit error or if some bit is missing, then there will be a mismatch between the calculated parities and the parities in the error correcting code which is read from the disk. It means the error is detected. Now, how Hamming code is able to correct the error? By analyzing these parity bits, it is able to identify the position of the error. And once the position of error is determined using some of the remaining information, this bit or the data can be recovered. So first detect the error, then determine the position of the error and then recover the data. So in RAID, the Hamming code work is actually to detect that a disk is failed and to determine which disk has failed. 
but in a practical system we will know when a disk fails and which disk has failed the disk controller itself will acknowledge it that is the error is detected and the position of the error is also determined we only need to repair the data on that disk and for just recovering the data for just rebuilding the data actually this much parity bits or this much redundant bits are not required a single check bit or a single parity bit is enough we will be able to rebuild the missing bit for example suppose we use a single parity bit for one data word and we are using even parity scheme the number of ones is made even what should be the value of parity bit to make the number of ones even the parity bit should be one now suppose one bit is missing so at receiving side we know that this is the position of the error and all the other values are correct then what should be this value so that the parity bit is one to make the number of ones even here the value should be zero similarly any missing bit can be recovered hence instead of these three parity bits just actually one parity bit is required and hence instead of these three redundant disk only one parity disk is required this is the idea behind RAID 3 and because of all four set drawbacks RAID 2 was almost never used but in RAID 3 instead of bit level striping we use the method of byte level striping and for redundancy we keep one separate or dedicated parity disk. We stripe the bytes of the data across the data disk and the corresponding parity byte is kept in the parity disk. Thus, RAID 3 provides redundancy with more usable disk capacity than RAID 2 and RAID 3. Even if one data disk fails, our data is safe. We are able to rebuild this data using the parity disk and the remaining data disks with an XOR operation on the remaining bytes. And for this redundancy, we are keeping only one disk. So more usable disk space is available. Now coming to performance. The parity generation is not as complex as Hamming code generation. But even here we are using just this byte level striping. Hence for every block read and block write access all the data disks will be involved. Hence at a time only one request can be serviced. Thus handling multiple requests with this architecture is not possible. Thus this level is suitable for long sequential reads and writes. For random read and write accesses at different portions of the logical disk this method is not suitable. Since RAID 3 is also not commonly used. And since we use striping and one dedicated parity disk, the minimum number of disks required for RAID 3 setup is 3.